Hi everybody and welcome to the 2017 Code Talk Series. The 2017 Code Talk Series is co-sponsored by ODTUG and IOUG and provided by Oracle Developer Advocates. Today's webinar is PL SQL What Can Do What? Presented by Stephen Feuerstein of Oracle Corporation and interviewing Morton Egan, the PL SQL Ninja. If you have any questions at any time during the webinar, please type them into the question box and they'll be addressed during the Q&A period at the end of the presentation. This presentation will be recorded and will be available to everyone through the Code Talk page of the ODTUG website. So welcome Stephen and Morton and thank you both for being here today. Thank you, Karen. Hello, everybody. So yes, my name is Stephen Feuerstein. I'm a member, actually leader of the Oracle Developer Advocates team and our job is to help you leverage the Oracle database more fully and effectively for application development and beyond that to get JavaScript developers and all those other modern young developers out there who don't understand the beauty and power of Oracle database and PL SQL and SQL to get them excited about these technologies as well. And one of the things we do is showcase the talent around the world. People are doing interesting fun stuff with these languages and Morton who we are calling the PL SQL Ninja he's kind of self-styled himself that way really caught my eye in the last year because he's not only been writing interesting code, but putting it out there for everybody to learn from and use. And to me, that's one of the key elements of a successful active community in which those who have developed a lot of expertise over the years are ready to take time out of their lives to share it with the rest of us. So in this session, what I'm pretty much going to do is turn it over to Morton, tell us a bit more about himself how he got involved with the Oracle database technology, why he loves PL SQL so much, and then he'll share some of the magic that he's been working with PL SQL over the last several years. Morton, tell us about yourself. All right, thank you, Stephen. So my name is Morton. Um, I originally started out with Oracle when I was roughly around 14, maybe. So my dad used to be the Oracle DBA for a big bank in Denmark, and when the other guys in class, they were doing um, um, like basic and and Pascal, I was doing uh, actually doing PL SQL on Oracle version six zero thirty seven on DOS. So uh, I started out pretty early. I got hired by Oracle when I was uh, just fresh out of I think that equivalents to college maybe second year of college. Uh, You know, that one is, is unusual. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so so my, my my passion behind Oracle started out just the database and actually it was a, a internal program inside of Oracle that they were sort of trying to, to do a marketing page about. Um, so back in really, really old days for Oracle support there was a page called Web IV, which was the the first version of MetaLink, if you want to call it that, which is Oracle support today. And, and so when they released MetaLink, they wanted to create this quiz page um, that, that people could go on, answer three questions, and then we would draw out a, a, a prize. And I think this was for the European support workers in Oracle. And so they wanted someone who could code that page. And I had been playing a bit around with the uh, web toolkit I think back then it was called OWA, Oracle Web Application Server or something. That sounds right. And it had, yeah, and it had this uh, PL SQL toolkit. So I said, well, I could do that. Um, and then I, I uh, went ahead and coded that very, very beautiful, I remember, orange web page with three questions, three drop downs. Uh -huh. But I, I still remember that feeling of, hey, I, I did all of this in PL SQL and I got it in the database and, and I have everything inside the database. And I thought, hey, that's that's actually pretty cool. So so that scaled up of today of course is Apex. I mean you have Apex today where you build web pages inside the database. But that turned me on to PL SQL. Um, and I haven't stopped since. Hmm. Um, yeah. So so to me, yeah. 
that's that's me. Um, I work as a solution architect today, so I don't do much POC call when it comes to my everyday work. Um, it's now just a hobby, or um, when I when I want to have fun <laughs> and not draw PowerPoint slides about systems. Well, um, you are quite an obsessive hobbyist, as everyone will see when you show us what you've been doing with PLC call on the side. Wow. Yes. Yes, because uh, uh, to be honest, um, it's still one of those things where my 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 job and my what I do for a living um, is is what I consider my hobby as well. So it's fun for me. It's not something where I think, oh, I gotta do this to either create a name for myself or um, something. It's just I, I I love to do it. And if one people can use it, fine. If a hundred people can use it, fine. If zero people can use it, still fine because I have fun. Um, so so I try to uh, just have fun basically. Um, so yeah, everything I do is is at the codemonth.dk website. Um, and then I have my my pet side project, which is which is a bit bigger than all my small projects, which is the the PL SQL package manager. Um, I will come back to that one. Yeah, so originally from Denmark, living in Singapore now, father of three, blah, 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 all that personal stuff. We can come back to that if people are interested in that. But Never say blah, blah, blah about your family. Ah, no, Especially no, if no. your wife is in, is in earshot. <laughs> yeah, but she left, so uh, I can oh, okay. say blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and by the way, thank you. This talk is sponsored by my wife. Uh, I'm, I'm using her computer. Mine wasn't working. Um, <laughs> so... If we, if I look at today, right, there's a ton of programming languages available, um, and and you always have this. Uh, I I remember reading an article, I think about uh, two weeks ago, about um, the top ten. They they look at the they look at basically uh, GitHub, and they look at the rise in a language, and the decline in the language, and they say the rise of the language in sorry no 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 they look at at weekends. Languages and weekday languages. That was the one. That was the one that was fun. So weekend languages are the ones that people do um, to try and learn something new, mm. right? So we have Go, we have Ruby, we have R, we have Haskell, uh, Erlang, all of Swift. Yeah, all of these new languages, which is stuff people want to learn. Um, stuff that uh, languages that are written about in articles or around the web uh, that seems fashionable. And then we had the, what they called the weekday languages, which was uh, Cobalt, Kix, PL SQL, um, Basic. So it was like the, the most boring list of languages if you uh, would go out and ask a 17-year-old a uh, uh, programmer, right? Or, or, what about uh, Java? Where did they put Java? Java was not working. on one of the list at all, oh. actually. Yeah. Um, so it's probably an everyday language. Ah, this, I see. this was the only languages what they they categorized as as weekend and weekday languages. Um, and like I say here, PL SQL is not on the sexy list. And and I kind I kind of understand why, because it's not something that you 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 think about when you want to go out and write fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I love PL SQL. I've, I used to be an Oracle employee. Um, I, I've grown up with PL SQL from my dad. Um, so, but but are we actually missing all that stuff in PL SQL? And and that to me is is um, is the big question here, because I don't think it's that fair. Um, and PL SQL, if and we'll we'll see this in some of my slides. Is that if we take a look at those languages, the the let's say the the hip languages, um, what's popular in those languages is that actually available in PL SQL? And and you you will see that it is. Um, so maybe PL SQL is just hidden behind this really really big successful database, which is an awesome product, um, but but. It has a language which that can do awesome stuff as well. Um, so, if we take a look at some of those languages, 
and, and try and see. So what I basically did, I went to each of the these languages, websites, homepages. They all have uh, package managers. Um, so if you go into the, to those the package manager sites, you can see what's popular, what's most dependent on, and what's most updated. So I took like a combination of of those three categories and said, okay, so what are the main packages or features or functionalities that all of these languages have? Because that should define sort of the cornerstone of, of what, what people want. Uh -huh. um, so in other words, what's make, what makes their world tick? So if we look at Node, which is probably the top hip uh, server side language out there today. So um, JavaScript. It's so JavaScript on the server. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Built by a Danish guy, by the way. I just <laughs> want to get that out there. <laughs> the V8 right. engine that it runs on is built by a Danish guy. Um, so if we look at, so so the top packages in there is, is, is Lodash, which is working with arrays, numbers, objects, and strings in an easy way. So it's, it's functions like map on arrays, um, formatting numbers, um, serializing objects, uh, upper case of strings, blah, blah, blah. It's requests, and this one is probably the one that's most repeated in every language. An easy library to do HTTP communication. It's async, so helper functions to work with asynchronous JavaScript. <coughs> Underscore again is, is a, a basically a competitor or a equivalent of Lodash. Um, Express, which is like a web framework to build web pages. And then a debugging library. So that's the top one for Node. If we look at Ruby, which is another popular language, it's a bundler manager. So that's a package manager basically. Rake, which, basic, which works with the bundler and when you install packages to make sure that you have the right dependencies installed, that it can run tasks. Um, it's JSON. Uh, active support, which is like in uh, uh, multi-language uh, Unicode uh, strings, time zones. It's uh, Nukugiri, which is a parser of XML, all that rack, which is again web application framework. And Passenger, which is an application server. If we look at Perl, which has been, it's not maybe not on the top five right now of, of the most hip languages, but it's still a language that's used a lot. Um, it's the database interface. It's JSON, again, time, CSV, communication. And again, for Python, it's packaging. It's language uh, parsing, and it's web. So what's the common theme here? It's application servers. So they need something, of course, to run whatever they write in their language on the internet. It's helper utilities, which is running stuff in parallel, task scheduling. It's arrays, it's security, it's IO, it's scheduling. It's parsing functions. These are like probably if you go out and look at, at the different package websites, this is what's mostly being built by guys out there is, is to parse text, parse different protocols of, of um, information. Um, yeah, and working with the different protocols. And the other so, common theme, of course, is coming up with all sorts of quirky names for things. Yes, that's, yes. That's got to be of course. fun. <laughs> yeah, there, there are at least in, in, I know in Node, there are at least 150 packages that you can install that can suggest names for your uh, code project. To suggest so, names? Seriously? <laughs> yes. And it will find, like, you can, you can choose a genre like manga or um, Disney or whatever, and it will find uh, a name you could use for your program. It's, yes. So, with that in mind, and, and this is, of course, a, a, a lead up to saying that PLSQL can actually do this stuff as well, right? We have all the same. So hang on, let me go back a bit. So basically, if you look at all of this, this is the most dependent, most updated um, 
most used packages in these languages. And, and, and the, the, the theme and the grouping is common if you go to Haskell, Erlang, any of the new functional uh, languages that are really, really hip at the moment. Um, it's, it's the same core packages that people use to build their applications. Um, so a way to see can we build stuff that people build in other languages, can we build that in Peel SQL would be to basically look at does Peel SQL have that available? Can, can we do the same stuff in Peel SQL? And to a large extent, I would say probably around 90%, we have almost everything built in, ready for us to go. So, Very cool. for, yes, it's, it's actually, it surprised me a bit too when I started looking into it, which is not for this talk, but if I go back maybe 10 years, I was kind of surprised that, um, and this is going to sound like a commercial for Oracle, but, but it is, it is feature rich when it comes to whatever you want to do, except for a couple of things, which actually doesn't make sense to build into Oracle. So, mm -hmm. so you always have to think about, it. so if I, if I, if allow me to, to go a little bit, bit outside of script here. So PL SQL is originally, as far as I remember, a derivative of the Ada language. That's correct. So if we go back to Ada and look at PL SQL and the way the compiler works, there is stuff that is simply not, um, doesn't make sense. So one of the things that really doesn't make sense is user interaction. Mm -hmm. So, so real-time interaction with your procedure, like typing something at a prompt and expecting a result, then typing something again at the prompt. You can't really build that easily into PL SQL. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, um, so, so you always have to look at the, every language has like a, a niche area where it only makes sense in that language. So that's where I say that, that PL SQL covers 90% of whatever you want to do in this world. The last 10%, there's a niche language out there. Or there's Java or .NET or whatever you use. Um, so if we look again at those categories, sorry, um, application servers. There's Apex, there's ORDS, if, and, and I, am, I am an Oracle guy. So I actually don't know much about the other uh, application servers that Oracle and other people have. So there, I know you know WebLogic exists. So I should have probably mentioned that here, um, but I don't know if if you guys have uh, bought anything more from Sun or whatever. So there's probably a ton more application servers that I don't know about. But but in my community and the, the people that I interact with, they, they today you, they use Apex and they use the ORDS, which is the the um, the REST well, data services. Mm -hmm. Yes, RESTful data uh, services. <clears throat> so if we look at helper utilities, so the first one they mentioned in in Node and all that was was parallel parallel execution. Now of course we have this already built into Oracle via SQL. So, so we can do stuff in parallel in just pure SQL. Um, but if we want to code something that should run in parallel, we have the parallel execute package, or we have the parallel enabled pipeline functions, um, which works amazingly uh, fast, the, especially the, the pipeline functions, the parallel ones. Um, the only place where I, I see that Oracle is perhaps uh, not as good as most of the other languages is in terms of array manipulation. So we have, we have collections, we have arrays, we have lists and table off and, and all of these in Oracle, mm -hmm. but, but the built-in methods are not as, as strong as I see in most of the other object-oriented languages. Which is again comes back to that PL SQL by, by nature is not an object oriented language, but it has the object oriented uh, functionality and features. Um, and to be fair, even when it comes to parallelism, it's true that 
the DBMS Parallel Execute package is available. I think it was introduced in 11. And it offers some parallelism, and you can do something parallel with SQL and pipeline table functions. But the bottom line is that PL SQL is not a multi-threaded language. You can do multi-threaded kinds of things, even using DBMS Scheduler, let's say. But it's, it, it's again, not innate to the language. And, and that makes sense in the sense of it running from within the database and having these interactions with the database. So it's not, yeah. it's never going to be one of its strengths for sure. And other languages clearly excel on that and are built around that. JavaScript async capabilities are not something you'll ever see in PL SQL. No, and, and simply that's again, like, like uh, you also said, it, because it doesn't make sense. If you look at where PL SQL is running, it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, and if, if I go back to the array manipulation, if you remember a question I sent to you and Bryn on Twitter, maybe two weeks ago, that's a little hint to something that I'm building that I will come back to in the end, because I, I think we can we can extend the arrays and the object and collections a bit more. Um, Excellent. In, in. So for I/O, of course, we have UTL file, so that's probably the one that people know of. Um, we have DBMS pipe. Uh, that's an easy way to do I/O uh, between processes. I/O isn't always to a file. Um, we can even use something like um, context. So the sys context is 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 a functionality we can use to to do I/O between processes within Oracle. DBMS pipe, of course, work for every process. Queuing, of course, we have advanced queues. Um, we have all the functionality we would ever need for, for anything queuing. Um, one quick point about advanced queuing, if for those of you who are using it or looking at it, in 12C, they have completely re-architected advanced queuing. They're offering what they now call partitioned sharded queues, though it's actually using partitioning, not Oracle sharding, available in Oracle 12. But apparently the, throup the throughput on AQ is orders of magnitude higher than it used to be. So if you have been using it and you're concerned about being able to do throughputs of hundreds of thousands of Q, you know, Q elements a second, and even much greater than that, probably in the millions, uh, you'll be able to see that kind of performance out of, out of 12 CAQ. Martin. Cool. And I, and I should mention, actually, that I, I, I've only uh, jumped to 12 C within the last year and a half. Um, so I'm actually kind of new to some of the 12 C features as well. Um, just so you guys know, um, which is my why, why I might skip out on some of the 12C stuff, uh, simply because I'm not fully up to speed on, on what's available. Um, for smaller I.O., like I said, global context is a really easy way to communicate uh, between processes. Um, I like it a lot because it's, um, it's just a fast way, very, very cheap when it comes to resource utilization on the database to transfer information between processes. I don't, I don't think that, um, that people always see it as a way to actually transfer data between processes. They see it as a, a holder, it, it, which, was, which is what it was built for, which is a holding area for context, which is like session variables. But it's, it's big enough to use to, uh, to transfer data around. And if you look at one of my packages, which I'll come back to, uh, which is a stats package, you'll, you'll see how you can use those contexts as a, basically small files. Um, and you have the, the old DBMS alert, which has been there since, I don't know, version 7, maybe, maybe even version 6. I don't know. Um, no, for no packages in version 6. Had to be version 7. OK, see. That one I couldn't remember, so That's it had to be version seven. Yeah. Um, so for scheduling, we have the scheduler, which to me is is a complete um, job scheduler, task scheduler. You can do really complicated chains, um, dependencies, file watchers, other watchers on a advanced queues. You could basically watch any, let's say, database input for changes and, and base your scheduler or tasks around that. Um, I don't see the chaining functionality being used that much, um, but that is something that I've used in a couple of projects and it, it's, it is really, really powerful. Um, 
And then, of course, for security, we have the DBMS crypto and the network ACL admin package um, to define access to, to our network. Um, there is probably new stuff in 12C that I'm unaware of, um, but those are the two that, that I use, which is, um, and especially DBMS crypto, which gives us the encryption functionalities. So parsing functions. We can parse text with the regular expressions that we have built into SQL, uh, the, the regular expression functions. We can parse and work and manipulate XML using the, all the DBMS underscore XML and XSL packages. If you look at the date and timestamp functionality in Oracle, so that's basically available with the built-in data type, and you combine that with the formatting options of Tuchar, um, I don't think you need anything more, basically. You, you have a complete date uh, and, and timestamp working uh, functionality in that. I, I don't honestly see how you, you would require more. Um, for 12C, of course, we have JSON. Um, CSV, we can parse inside appeal SQL easily. There's the DBMS utility uh, procedure, which can, I think, can go both ways. So it can take CSV, convert into something uh, in a table, and take a table and convert to CSV. We have SQL Loader, which has been there at least since version 6. Um, external tables, which, I, if I'm not mistaken, in 12C is even more easier, since it has that sort of predictive way of, of loading that you don't have to specify the columns, it will actually just kind of guess. Am I right? Honestly, I do not know. I'll, I'll check into that. And for those of you who aren't aware of it, so external tables allow you to essentially read a file and treat it as if it were a table select from the contents of a file with SQL. And you essentially use a SQL loader-like syntax to define the interface to the file and then just go at it as a view. Uh, really and cool that's and I know Connor McDonald uh, from, from Ask Tom has done a video about this new functionality in 12C. Okay. Um, so, so I know it, it's, it's, it exists, I just I, I can't remember what it's called. Um, protocols. And this is where most people probably only use um, UTL HTTP and UTL mail. Um, but we have the low level socket programming available. We can do UTL TCP. So we can build a terminal emulator in PLC call, which I've done. So so you can interact with, with a um, SSH session or a normal telnet session. You can build um, communicate. So a lot of people use the UTL TCP to build FTP packages. So they can could interact with FTP servers. Um, we have DBMS LDAP, we have UTL SMTP, but once you have UTL TCP, you can actually build whatever type of, let's say, network communication you need. So one of the packages that we can take a look at later um, that I've built uses UTL TCP extensively. Um, and, and, and like I say, with, with these packages, we can actually cover most of what, uh, what type of communication you want to build today. You, you can even do web sockets if you want to. And just to reassure people, I don't have personal experience with these packages myself, but you still have to have the authorization set up to be able to leave the database and have these network yes. connections. So it's not like anybody can just go in and start doing this kind of socket programming. No, so it uses, if you go back to the page where I mentioned, the, the DBMS uh, network ACL, so, so there's access control list for all of these packages. Okay. You have to be privileged to access the server you're communicating with. Um, and, and yeah, so, so there's a tight security control around it. Um, and if we then look outside, which is um, where a lot of people are building interesting stuff. Um, there, there's no way around it. The, the Alexandria Library by, by uh, Morton, also a Morton, <laughs> um, 
is an amazing library of uh, a collection of, of packages that works with a lot of the APIs that, that are, let's call it new and hip, like Amazon Cloud, like Google, like Excel, PDF, PayPal, um, basically all of the public APIs that were available at the time when he started writing it. Um, we have the logger by uh, Martin um, D'Souza, um, originally written by Tyler Muth, Muth, which I think is an Oracle employee. Not anymore. Um, not anymore. Oh, okay. Came back and twice. He's he's out, he's gone. <laughs> okay. Um, but if you look at those packages, they they are excellent packages that that we can use out there. Um, and there's a lot, lot more out there. So go to GitHub um, and and basically search because there's a lot of, of hidden packages out there. Um, and, and I know I've left out a lot of uh, probably more DBA related stuff. Um, but to me, it's this is pure SQL. So, so all the, the other, let's say, packages and procedures that are built around doing DBA work and, and performance optimization, uh, we can always do another talk about that if we want to. Just one other I'll throw in there because it is, I think, one of the longer lasting open source uh, external packages, UT PL SQL. So if you're interested in doing any kind of automated regression testing of your PL SQL code, and of course you are, check yes. out UT PL SQL. Uh, it's actually in its second or third life at this point. So they're coming out with version three, completely redesigning the API and the functionality built around, I think, an object-oriented approach instead of a package, PL SQL packaged approach. So another really good one. And, and that's, uh, that's actually a good thing because I am looking into using the version 3 in my own setup here at home. So, so I, have this <clears throat> I have this easy setup where every project is basically pre-built with certain functionality like uh, tracing, debugging, logging, um, and I want to do uh, automated unit testing uh, when I write my stuff um, because like any other developer uh, if it's not automatically in there I tend to maybe forget it once in a while That's good. <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember who said it but but um, maybe maybe it was even you who mentioned the, the quote uh, I'm once in a while in, in my code is that why is he doing that? That's not the way to do it. And it's simply because, well, it maybe it was 2 a.m. in the morning and I just wanted something to compile and, and work. So so don't always take my quote quality as a production ready code. Um, but I'm excellent at building proof of concept code. <laughs> um, so coming back to me. Of course, I built uh, some stuff too. Um, so maybe we should start taking a look at some of the stuff that I've built. So I will open up my Code Month web page, and can you see this? Mm -hmm. Good. So it all basically started back in 2014. Um, in January because or actually in December 2013 where I told myself that I wanted to try and build something if possible every month just a small tool that I could use or I could see a valuable usage of and and maybe I could use it in my work life as well or maybe I would just learn some new PL SQL from doing it. So the very first thing I did, um, I, I was basically built for the client I was at at the moment when I did this, which was a way to document PL SQL packages in a way that was more interactive. So if I look at the, the, the 
documentation software out there today, they can take, they do it the same way that I, that, that I do. It's basically tax, and if there's no tax, they will take the standard information from, from the dictionary and, and just make it into an HTML page. Problem to me was that the HTML page was not interactive. You couldn't search. Hmm. So, so I built a documentation package where the output at that point, I think, was done in Angular. Um, it was one of these uh, MVC frameworks from, I think, Google originally built it. Um, but it's basically like a, 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 a client-side JavaScript framework that, that works easily with, with making stuff more interactive. So you could search in the code. You could search uh, for specific features like um, show me all the, the packages or procedures that does a commit um, if you wanted that. Or show me all the packages and procedures where I have a, if uh, an exception when others then no. So it could kind of flag out all of those stuff and you could search and, and you could see lines of code, all that stuff. And let's just remind um, people that you're going through these different projects now. These are all things that you, the listener and watcher, can download and utilize yourselves. So yes, if any of these yes. are looking interesting, as, as Morton goes through them, visit codemonth.dk or GitHub and grab hold. And just yeah, a little time is. reminder, so we have about 20 minutes left or less if we leave some time for questions. Okay, I'll, I'll speed it up a bit. So just, they're all released, uh, open source, take it, uh, do it with you, what, what you want. Um, no money required or anything. Um, second one I built was, was actually for me. So I used this library, which is, that is probably the one that I use the most personally myself in every day, which is my GitHub integration. So every PL SQL I do in my, my, uh, in my database is version controlled directly against GitHub. So when I change code, it uploads the new version to, the, to my GitHub repository. Um, uh, I can pull back a, a tag version. So when I tag a release, so inside PL SQL, I can say update my schema to version 1.0. And it will pull that code from GitHub um, and, and basically compile that um, in, in that schema. Kind of like additions, uh, but also with source control. Um, and this one is probably the one that's, mm, it's one of the, the projects that I have that, that is uh, feature rich and, and, and close to production ready. So I would definitely go ahead and look at that one. Um, I did a Jira build-in, so I really started looking into all these APIs of the tools that my clients was working. So if you look at 2015, most of this uh, is, in the beginning, is APIs. Um, I did a quick test on sentiment analysis, uh, simply because I tend to end up on Wikipedia a lot. And then I go on a Wikipedia walkabout. And then at 4 a.m. in the morning, I realize I'm reading something about um, ant, coloni ant colonization optimization and, <laughs> and figuring out how I can use that in PL SQL. Wow. Um, so I ended up one day on, on a sentiment analysis page and thought, hey, I can do this algorithm in PL SQL. I have Time Ninja, which is probably the only thing that I and that is missing from the time functionality and date functionality inside of Oracle, which is the human readable format. Right. So, so you can take a time and you can basically make it into a, a human readable format, like on Facebook or Twitter, where you say this post was updated uh, a few seconds ago, 20 minutes just, ago. Just a comment to those watching, uh, you won't be able to get a, a really deep sense of this from the little time we have, but Morden, He's pretty obsessive. There's no question about it. And you can see just in a little bit of these readouts and from some of the other packages like the random data generator that he's just paid a lot of attention to detail that we'll never get down to. So you see an hour ago, a few seconds ago. It's like a, he'll give you an amount of uh, flexibility that you just don't have time to do yourself, which is why it really pays to you know, take a look around and see if somebody's already done something similar to what you want. And with his, it's probably vastly beyond anything you'll ever need. 
Yeah, and so so if we look at 2015, there's the one that uses UTL-TCP, if you want to see how to really use UTL-TCP, is the syslog packages, a uh, syslog package that I built, which is basically a, a, a built-in package to uh, integrate to the uh, Unix syslog. And that uses standard um, UTL-TCP. And I do mention, I will highlight that here, um, the ACL, right, so the network access uh, that is required to do this. So you can't just log into Oracle and start communicating out to your syslog. You have to have the right privileges to, to connect to it. And Gordon, um, as long as you're new to Max, the, the screen is pretty easy to see, but if you can hold down the command key, it's on the bottom left of your keyboard, and the plus key at the same time, it should make the screen get bigger. The text, yeah, there we go. This is better? Yep. Ah, okay, good. Yes, I am completely new to Mac. This is my first time actually doing anything on a Mac. Um, so, yeah, the, the, if you want to see UTL TCP, go to the, the syslog entry. Um, the stats one I use uh, as a built-in um, performance, uh, easy, lightweight performance packages. Um, let's find something that's a bit more, um, hang on, let's find something that's a bit more PLC core. Uh, yeah, so I have this really, really, really big package, which <laughs> is called uh, Random Ninja, which is to generate random data. Um, and, and the support list is, is getting quite comprehensive now. So basically, I, if, if I look at work, I really have to create random data a lot. Uh, there's a lot of test cases we need to do where we need to create random data. You can't always use production data. Um, and, and so I built this package which can generate uh, Markov sentences. So this is building sentences that look real but are actually completely random. Um, it supports, I think right now, some f somewhere around 70 uh, different uh, data domains. Let me see if I can find the, the one that lists everything. Yep, okay, so This is random data that it supports. Of course, the core random stuff, text random, time random. It can give you anything random in location, coordinates, zip code, streets, and it's like all I country said, specific. Extremely obsessive individual here. Yes. So take advantage of it. <laughs> um, um, and I built an easier package around that, basically called test data, um, where you can you can you can build statistically correct data set for countries. So basically create United States inside a, 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 a database and, and get um, demographically correct data um, for that specific country. Uh, the new stuff I've been working on uh, at the moment is, is a JavaScript uh, thing that is really, really popular in JavaScript right now called Promises which is you, you execute something and what you get back is an object that doesn't contain the value of what you executed, but it contains a promise that at some point you will get that value back. So it's a really easy way to do asynchronous execution of multiple functions. It's a bit, uh, let's say, convoluted and, and it's a bit complex, so I won't go too much into it, but if you really like object-oriented stuff in PL SQL and asynchronous execution automatically, um, I would definitely look into this one. Can you show us any of the pieces of code where you, you show the chaining of like 10 function calls dot, 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 dot? Yes, so let me, so basically what Promises does is, is, is it gives you an object and you can use that object to say when the value of that is uh, complete, I want you to execute this. And it, when the value of that is complete, so forgive me, I'm on my 
wife's machine here. Let me see if I can find. No, that's not the one. How do I get? Oh, here we go. Uh, hang on. You can see this, right? Let's do command new. There's a new one. So let's imagine we had our promise. Hang on, let me zoom again. I can, can I zoom in this one also? Not sure. It's you might work. No. Nope. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Okay, but I can basically do promise and then say when this is complete, um, okay. it got bigger fund. Yeah. Good. Uh, then oh, execute this function. And when that is complete, I want you to execute other function. And when that is complete, I want you to do a third function. So you can basically do, um, I would almost call it a Pythonic way of, of programming, but a really easy way where I have, I have I've done all the hard work of, because if you look at the source code, this is basically um, let me go back to this one. Uh, this is basically um, DBMS scheduler jobs in the background because that is what can give you a synchronicity um, inside the database from a, from a PL SQL standpoint. So it, it does a lot of, 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 of rough work in the background, um, but it's an easy way to, to basically do chaining with inside the, 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 the scheduler. Um, so chances are, for most PLSQL developers, you're probably not going to use this promises package. But again, if you want to just take a look at somebody who's really stretching the boundaries of, of what would be considered normal or mainstream PLSQL and what they can do with it, it's probably a great thing to take a look at under the covers. The last thing I want to mention is I'm, <clears throat> I'm trying to build a package manager for Oracle PLSQL. So I got really envious with Node and all these guys because they have an easy way of installing packages. So let's uh, just cover that. Just talk about what NPM does for them. I don't think so most of us are familiar with package managers at all. So let's take NPM, which is also a, a really good source for me um, to just see what, what people are writing. So NPM is the package manager for Node. So I click it. Uh, a package manager for JavaScript. So it gives, it gives you a, a client command line interface to install packages. And what it, 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 it can do it with uh, dependencies. So basically it has a central repository um, and you can um, just basically easy install packages from the command line. So you can say things, npm install the name of the package and it pulls out all the related code that you need. So in one line, this is what yes. they crow about. In one line, you can install everything you need. You don't have to worry about any of the details. And in PLSQL, of course, in Oracle, it's not, it's, it's like that it's in the sense that once all the code is installed, it's all managed, the dependencies are kept track of and all of that. So you don't have to make your executable. But in terms of gathering all the pieces you need, not at all. Built in. And especially, especially if you start working with something that's, um, let's say, third party. So like all the stuff that we're building in, in the community, it would be amazing if we could have a, a page like NPM mm -hmm. um, and just have our, our code packages there. And you could use the, 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 the um, logging package from, from um, Martin and you could use the unit testing uh, package. And you could just, when you build your package, you could have a, a, a file saying, I'm using this package and this package. And then when someone wanted to install your package, they could just write npm install your package name. And that's what I've tried to build in for PSQL. Um, and of course, I'm hosting a repository. But to be honest, I don't think I have the time to, mm. to bring it into uh, complete production. So if someone wants to work with me on, on getting a, probably a, a, a more usable version up and running, that would be nice. Um, feel free to contact me. Um, yeah, so, so that's the big project that I'm working on. And I just want to show that all my code, everything I built, is available on GitHub. Um, 
and you can peek into, so if a project is not mentioned on code month, but mentioned here, it's because I'm starting something new, hmm. like this one called Cyclus Ninja. Um, but basically, um, we, um, I, all my code is available here, and it's freely available to use for anyone. Very much appreciated. All right. Did you have any closing slides you wanted to cover? Should we go right to questions? We can go right to questions. Great. Thank you, Morton. So that was obviously a quick look through both his past experiences, and you can see he's been extremely busy since 2014. I don't think you've made it to quite one project every month. No. Nope. But you've done, you've done pretty good for yourself. I, I had a move to Singapore between 14 and 15, and yeah. You then let I that in the way? <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. You know, that family stuff. So let's, let's go ahead and see if we've got any questions. It looks like I've got one or two logged in here. So right now, folks, if you have questions, type it into the chat box or the question box, and we'll make sure it gets asked. Would you consider promises to be feature complete? What about production ready? That one is, is, is pretty close to production ready. So give me about, I would say, two weeks. Um, the last, I need one last thing in there, and then it, it, it's actually fully promise compliant. I'm running the test from the promises web page, and it's 95% compliant. Well, and I think it would be worth reminding people that you're not building commercial software, so that no. even, if, even if you say it's production ready, it's on them to make sure that they test your code and all of that. Correct. So I try to test it to the, so if I build something based on an existing standard like Promises, I take whatever they have and say, if you can execute this, you're compliant. So I'm compliant, but if that means that I will, if that, it, that doesn't mean that it will work in every case. Mm -hmm. All right. but yeah, it's, it's pretty close to being usable. Great. So I don't have other questions at a moment. Let's see if anything else rolls in. Um, do, you, do you have a sense of which of those packages are most widely used? Like, are there any ones that have particularly seemed to have grabbed people's attention, the random the test data? Uh, probably the random data one. So, so that one seems to uh, be, be quite a big um, ho uh, home run at, at people because everyone needs to create random data, but it's a pain. And, and so I'll, I'll try and, and, and see if I can write a couple of articles about how you can easily basically define your own random data sets and, and have the package created for you. I built in a customization where it will dynamically create the packages you need to create your random data. Huh. Neat. Dynamic code yeah. generation. I love it. Yeah. Are there any packages that stand out as others that people have actually forked and made changes to and done pull requests on? Uh, so they, they've done with the package manager. So I know there's two other guys trying to build some um, package manager stuff for PL SQL. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a guy write to me about the, the JWT, which is basically JavaScript web tokens. It's a simplified version of um, SAML, so the, 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 the authorization. Um, authentication protocol, SAML, which is really big and verbose. So if you just need something very simple, there's a, a standard or, yeah, the word standard is loosely uh, used these days, but there's a, a, an initiative called JavaScript Web Tokens, which is a much easier way. Um, then I'm going to guess that most people use my GitHub package as well. All right. I've got two other questions. Uh, maybe, maybe more than that. Wait a minute. Any example where you call web services through PL SQL? And I'd say that you did point that out, but... All the time. But if you look especially at Airbreak and PagerDuty UTL, those packages, and the GitHub and the Jira packages, those use the official web services API for those companies. So the Jira API and the GitHub API. Yeah. Question is, with so many Git projects and a robust command line, what does Oracle Git offer. Do you know what Oracle Git is? Yeah, I've seen it. Um, I think Oracle Git works with your local Git. Um, 
whereas my works with the GitHub uh, website version. And I think there's probably better integration possibilities with Oracle Git. Um, I, I haven't followed up. I was actually supposed to watch the, the, the seminar. Um, Wait, didn't is this have time. Or, are you talking about Git Aura from Yalim Gerger? Yeah, I think so. Git Aura, okay. So maybe that's what they mean by Oracle Git, Git Aura. Ah. Yeah. yeah. So that's built right into, I think it's a plugin for SQL developer. Ah, and okay. Then, yeah. uh, let's see, here's one. I'm new with PL SQL. Could you give me some advice on how to be good at it? <laughs> Um, try, try, and try again. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, to me, it's just a matter of, of go ahead and, and write something that you, you want to try and write, and it will probably fail the first nine times, but that tenth time where it works, it, it, you, 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 you've learned a lot. I mean, you learn from mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Me so, too. Um, I, I would just say go ahead and, and try and build something that you think would be fun to build. It ha to me, learning is about having fun. Mm -hmm. so, so I try and separate work peel SQL and fun peel SQL. And, and work peel SQL is something that I do because someone pays me to provide a service or uh, my, basically my knowledge to create value for that company. Um, fun peel SQL is where I know that I will learn something new. So, so I've built. I, I've. I, I promise I will release this on GitHub later this year. But I've built a media server in Pure SQL. Hmm. So, so uh, you can do anything. And the reason I built a media server is because I wanted to try it out. It's not going to perform like a media server built in Java. Uh -huh. I know that. But, but it was fun to try and see if you could do it in Pure SQL. I've built image recognition in Pure SQL. Um, to sort Lego blocks on a floor. So take a picture, upload it to the database, and let the database tell you what kind of blocks you have. You know how to have fun with PL SQL. Um, let's see. So just another piece of advice or so for a new developer. First of all, PL SQL is simply not that hard to learn how to use. As languages go, it's pretty straightforward. And then you can go crazy with it, as Morton has. The other thing I would say is read other people's code. And Morton is probably a great place to start. Go and look at his packages. Look at how he writes code. And the more you read, just as it is learning, reading English or reading books in any language, the more you're reading, you're developing pattern recognition and patterns in yourself about how you're going to code. So if you look at somebody else's code that's good code, you'll end up writing better code. Here's a good question for you. You are impressive. Is there a way to search easily your website for keywords, to you know, search out things by keyword on your site on CodeMonk? <laughs> I will build that. No, no. So my my website is 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 using the Oracle Express, the free version of Oracle. Uh, so so, but I, as far as I remember, that one actually includes Oracle Text. So maybe it's time yes. that I do something with Oracle Text. So I expect we'll see Search Ninja very soon, and you'll use it on yes. your own site. Great. And uh, here's another one, and we're just about out of time. Do you do anything with spatial data, generating random spatial data in Oracle? Random spatial data. There you go. Yes, I do. So if you ah. look at my DBMS random package, um, I have uh, generate random um, uh, oh. maps. Yeah. I can generate random random countries. So if you want to generate a, a, an image of a country, like on Google Maps, I generate a random uh, a random image of a uh, a, a, a country based on right. the spatial packages. And. Um, there's a very specific question, and we're going to wrap up. Does GitHub Util work if we have a two-factor authentication set up as a security measure? Uh, I don't know, I, but I can answer that. I will put that on my blog within the next week. And then I'll make this the last one. Is there, I never knew there was a unit testing package out there. Fantastic. Is there a deployment engine like Hudson for PL SQL? Um, well, so in terms of continuous integration and scripting steps, there's no reason that Hudson and Jenkins and products like that won't work. In fact, they do work with PL SQL. There are lots of shops doing it. And I know of organizations, particularly with UTPL SQL, where every night they use Jensen or, or uh, Jenkins or Hudson or a variation of that to actually install their database, install UTPL SQL, install their application, and then run their tests and throw it all, all the way when they're done. So you can definitely integrate 
PLSQL and SQL processing in the database as part of the scripting environment. Uh, yeah, okay. I can I, I can say we do that at, at our work. We have a small side project that runs where part of it is Oracle, and it's all part of a, a Jenkins flow. Great. And you'll be seeing, certainly from our standpoint now, Oracle, you'll be seeing us offering a lot more of that in terms of the cloud service. There's the application builder cloud service, uh, which, I'm sorry, application developer cloud service, which will integrate all these pieces together for you. So check that out. There, I got my plug-in for Oracle cloud services. How cool is that? All right, we are out of time. Morton, thank you so much for getting up extremely early in your day in Singapore and you're sharing welcome. all the really interesting uh, and exciting stuff you're doing with PLSQL. Hopefully, you will have served as an inspiration to others, and we'll see more traffic to your site and more usage of these packages. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.